Hey guys, Stango Tiger Fist. It's early in the morning. Got a stack of comic books. Got fresh coffee. Oh, that's good. Oh, that makes life worth living. I also have a little bit of the shakes because I haven't had any protein yet today. You guys have probably noticed in videos, sometimes I have a little bit of a tremor. I even have a tremor in my voice. Sometimes it's, you know, I, I have some conditions, rheumatoid arthritis and things that I take medication for. And so it, I, I kind of have this tremor all the time. I thought about at one point, uh, you know, like getting into television, you know, like uh, on Star Trek when uh, the Enterprise gets struck by uh, an enemy blast the everybody shakes and stuff but you know what i found out it that it's not the people that shake they shake the camera which you know makes sense but you know that kind of blew my plans along those lines but uh you know i apologize if my shaking makes you think that I live in fear. I don't live in fear. It's just a uh, neurological issue. So my goal today is to get through the remainder of my action comics, and uh, I think we can do that pretty quickly. Uh, action comics number 586, more of the action comics that I bought from the video store that was down the street from my apartment. Here is some uh, hideous John Byrne artwork these are books they came out in 87 i think when i bought them it was probably 1988 1989 so these were just you know kind of some bagged and boarded back issues that they didn't they didn't put brand new comics in the video store they just put a very slender assortment of back issues probably stuff that was left over from their uh, new comic sales but this is the kind of stuff that attracted me even as a kid. I always had an affinity for the B-lister DC superheroes, and I got excited as a kid when they made appearances in books. What I thought was interesting about this one is that you get kind of a under-the-mask view of Hawkman, and uh, apparently his eyes are nowhere near where the eyes in the mask go. So, who knew? Metal Men, how about that? I remember this one very clearly. Thought it was very cool that Superboy was fighting Superman. I don't remember how that uh, came to pass. I did read these long, long ago. Can't really talk about this issue. This is a family channel. Spectre, one of my favorite... Uh, characters. I'm going to do a top 10 favorite characters and, and Spectre absolutely makes that list. Uh, you know, the, this is what I would call serviceable John Bernhardt. It's nice and clean. The anatomy is fine. The layout of the book is fine, but there's just nothing remarkable about it. Oh, two copies. Wow, look at that. I, I have uh, heard collectors uh, talk about variations in color in comics. I don't know how clear that is on the video, but in this one, the purple background has a very pronounced blue cast. And in this one, it has a, a much more uh, magenta cast. And, uh, you know, I have heard that discussed on comics channels as if it's two different colors of purple that they used but you know these are four color process printed covers they're they're all uh full color using uh yellow cyan magenta and black and so any variation is going to shift the cast of those colors that you know this is probably a uh, unprofessional degree of variation <laughs> you usually it's it's about 10 percent variation is acceptable but yeah that's that's pretty severe i forgot i even had this issue yeah i kind of like this one john byrne and george perez i'd pay 250 for that 
this is, I thought this was interesting, still by uh, 1988. Looks like somebody wrote 1988 up here on something that was on top of there and put an indentation in it. Never noticed that before, or I probably did. I just don't remember it. But these were also books that I picked up at the video store. Andy Kubert artwork. For some reason, I like this one. I thought this was Gil Kane. That's the way I remembered it, but it's not. Ugly. Oh, this, uh, this book is a homage to uh, a famous Carmen Infantino uh, piece of work that I think originally showed up as a pinup in the 1960s. I don't think that it ever appeared as a comic book cover. And then it uh, became a popular image for licensing. So like I had a jigsaw puzzle of it. Hang on a second. I'm going to find, I got to show you the original Carmine Infantino drawing of Batman and Robin. So here is the original Carmen Infantino drawing of Batman and Robin that was being referenced in this cover. Oh, and it, uh, oh, Murphy Anderson inked them both. I didn't notice that. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Murph Murphy Anderson inked the original Infantino drawing and, and also inked this one. That's neat, but, you know, this just really grabbed me at the time that I bought these because this was one of my childhood favorite books. It's Batman from the 30s to the 70s. And I had not seen this book for years and years when I happened to notice that issue. So I'm sure it got me kind of fired up with nostalgia. But uh, this is the book that introduced me to the, the full... And I did have the Superman companion book as well. But it's just reprints of Batman stories from the, the very first stories right up to stuff from the early 70s. I saw uh, Sleepy Reader referencing this book, uh, but just learned a lot about the history of Batman comics. And I read this book and the stories in it over and over and over again as a kid. And the comic books that were shown in it, you know, I just thought, oh my goodness, I've got to find these. But they seemed very inaccessible when you were a kid. But uh, yeah, I, I own all these books now. So, very important book uh, to me growing up in the process of getting me completely hooked on comic books. Why a comic book so addictive? Here is an uncharacteristically moody Superman cover that looks like it should be a Batman cover. I picked this up at an antique store last year at some point. A, a big thing for me with comic book covers, uh, especially if I'm looking to choose collectible books out of a run of comics that are representative of it and attractive to me, they're almost always in city settings. Like, I like to see cities in my superhero comics. So I like this city background. I like the way that it's monochromatic and the, the figures are out in front, although I, I still think it's a little weak. The, the line weights are not heavy enough to really break them off of there. And I, I like this trade dress. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was a nice, clean trade dress. It, it reminds me quite a bit of the trade dress that DC is using currently. The Last Son of Krypton is back. Nobody cares anymore. These are some beautiful books. These were books that were coming out right before I came back to... Uh, having a pull list and hitting the comic book shops every week. When I when I moved to Chicago, I moved to this idyllic uh, suburb called Elmhurst, and it, it was just a beautiful town. You know, train ran through the middle of it. Great, vibrant little downtown. Uh, just beautiful parks, gigantic trees everywhere. I really, really loved living there. And there was a comic book shop right in the downtown, like right by the 
train station, which is, you know, better real estate than, than comic book shops usually occupy, although they had been there for a long time. I actually remembered seeing their ads in the Overstreet price guide uh, before I ever lived there, clear back when I was in Ohio. I walked into this comic book shop and picked up uh, like three comic books and read them, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. And I put together a pull list, and you know, I got my weekly books for years there after that. But these are, are books that I missed, and I just think these are really exciting looking comic books. These are comic books that would grab my attention and get me to come up off of some money for them. Here is uh, John Byrne once again destroying his own work with poor inking. Uh, somehow we have Superman uh, in, in this dynamic action-packed pose and yet he looks pillow soft because of John Byrne destroying his own work. I, you know, I just, between John Byrne uh, drawing the most hideous globular looking artwork that you can imagine and Neil Adams now drawing like, like uh, Mort Drucker, I don't want to live anymore. Thank God, thank God for, for young, talented artists and illustrators who are good enough to do anything they want to do in life, but for some sick reason decide they want to draw comic books. Thank God for those people. Uh, this was during my pull list days. I was given Action Comics a try, uh, hence the green label. This was an annual I picked up in a dollar box recently at the Trump Mall. If you don't know about the Trump Mall, I explained that in a previous video. Who wants to read about Superman with blue jeans on and a towel around his neck? Not me. But at this time I was giving uh, all of the new 52 books uh, a chance digitally. I was very excited about the new 52 and uh, was excited about the prospect of growing up with a universe from the ground up uh, until it became very apparent that DC Comics did not have the courage of their convictions and they were going to blow it. Issue number two of that, yeah, it's lovely artwork, you know, Rags Morales, beautiful artwork. I just, the whole concept just really didn't stick with me. And they, they tried to amplify uh, the the social justice aspect of Superman from the, the 30s and 40s. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I get that. That was kind of an interesting and inspired route to take, but I just didn't feel like they... They hit the nail on the head. And the the uh, teal decals means that they are books that I picked up during this comiXology phase and now have picked up physical copies to put into my collection. Eye candy, pure eye candy. Just uh, dug that cover. Very nice. And talk about eye candy. Darwin Cook cover. You know, I, I'm sure there are people who don't like Darwin Cook. I don't understand them. Another just uh, dynamic book that I picked up. This was I went to a uh, a shop that was going out of business in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. It, it was never a good shop. It was just dirty and dingy inside and poorly organized. When they went out of business, I was kind of like, yeah, well, you know, you kind of deserve it. But I did take the opportunity to grab some of their discounted books. And this might be another one from that. And then here are the issues that I picked up for the Action Comics 1000. Uh, these prestige format books that came out, what was it, last year? I Time goes so fast when you're older. I, you know, to me, something that came out recently is pretty much anything that's come out since 2000. It's, it's hard to track with time as you get older. And uh, so these are the books that I decided to pick up. 
I think this was a store exclusive, if I remember right. Michael Cho. Is it my... I don't know. One of the Cho's. There are two of them. One draws pinup stuff and one draws this Darwin Cook kind of stuff. And I never can keep them straight. And then just the uh, 1980s homage cover. Uh, that's my Lois Lane. That's my Jimmy Olsen. That is my Lex Luthor. All right, guys, that uh, finishes up the action comics. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you didn't, do what you must. This is Stango Tiger Fist. See ya!